13, sophomore striker Isabel Cox. Number 15, freshman attacker Avery Patterson. Number 20, sophomore midfielder Libby Moore. And freshman attacker number 24, Talia Della Peruta. The Tar Heels are head coached by Anson Dorrance, who is in his 42nd season as the head coach of the Tar Heels. And as Carolina begins to kick things off, let's quickly go over the Washington starting lineup who come into today's game with a record of 10 wins, four draws, and three losses, and a record of five, three, and three out of the Pac-12. Starting in goal will be double zero redshirt junior Olivia Sakani. The outfield players include number three, senior Kaylee Pang. Number eight, senior midfielder Amira Hussein. Number 10, junior attacker Summer Yates. As the whistle goes against the Tar Heels. You also have number 12, junior defender Kaylee, Kayla McDaniel. Number 16, senior midfielder Sienna Simmonsma. Number 21, senior midfielder Olivia Vanderjacht. Number 22, uh, redshirt freshman attacker Margot Clark as the free kick is sent in and it's past everybody. And it'll be a goal kick to the Tar Heels. You also have number 29, senior attacker Mary Johnston. Number 30, junior attacker Carly Stickle. And finally, senior defender number 35, Laura Roberts. The head coach for, Wa for the Washington Huskies in her first season is Nicole Van Dyke. And as you see, Carolina is wearing all white today. Washington with black tops and purple shorts, though the black and purple kind of meld together at the midriff. As you said, the Tar Heels coming in as the number two seed in the NCAA tournament. As Dickey, now out of a position, trying to win that ball back. Tolentino, and the ball finds a teammate, and the ball goes forward for a Washington throw as Isabel Cox did battle with Kayleen Pang. For North Carolina, this is the 39th consecutive appearance in the NCAA tournament. They, have, they are the only team in women's college soccer to compete in every NCAA tournament. And they come into today's game with an impressive 137 career wins for the 21 time national champions under the stewardship of Anson Dorrance, the Hall of Fame head coach. Washington, meanwhile, is making their 16th appearance in the NCAA tournament and their first time in back-to-back -back tournaments since 2014-2015. They're now in the tournament for in 2019 and 2021 as the Huskies have a throw in deep in their own, deep in the Tar Heels zone. Long throw into the box, not dealt with and the shot is blocked. by North Carolina's Avery Patterson. It's going to be a corner kick for the Huskies here in the opening few minutes. This is going to be a battle of styles today in this round of 16 affair as the Tar Heels deal with the corner kick. Carolina is one of the highest scoring offenses in NCAA women's college soccer. They've scored 44 goals in 2020, 2021, and it conceded only six. Meanwhile, Washington has scored 20 goals, but in their 17 games, they have only conceded 11, which is the best defensive record in the Pac-12. And they've been so good as of late that they've had Five consecutive shutouts. This is a team that prides itself on defense, and they did so in their first two games of the NCAA tournament 
here in the state of North Carolina. They defeated Liberty in the first round by a score of three to nothing. And then they drew the 15 seed St. Louis and defeated the Billikens four to three in a penalty kick shootout where the winner, the, the player that scored the winning PK was the goalkeeper, Olivia Sakani. Here's Meza, Tolentino, pressure from both Yates and Stickle. And Libby Moore, actually that's Alexis Allen, number two in white under a little bit of pressure from Simmonsma. And now Stickle. But now Meza and the Tar Heels can get out of trouble. Meza trying to split the defense fortunate touch that it wasn't picked off and now Washington sends it into the Carolina third. Here's Talia De De La Peruta looking for Isabel Cox picked off. Now the Huskies can build an attack and this is a long range effort from Washington, I believe that's number eight, Amira Hussein. Had seen Claudia Dickey off her line, trying to go for it from distance. Never a bad effort, but it's one that you gotta be confident in to see, is the goalkeeper off the line? And if so, can I make it? If you were with us earlier here at field number four at Wake Med Soccer Park, you missed a thriller as the Texas A&M Aggies and the Oklahoma State Cowgirls battled to a 3-3 draw. After 110 minutes, it went to a penalty kick shootout. And it was the Aggies that prevailed 4-3 in the shootout. The, win the winner coming from Laney Carroll after the fifth penalty kick taker, uh, her shot hit the post. So Texas A&M awaits the winner of this game on Sunday, May 9th. Long kick by Sakani. Now here's Summer Yates trying to slip it to Margot Clark, and it'll be a throw to the Tar Heels. This North Carolina side, as you mentioned, 21 national championships. They're trying to get back to the national championship after getting to the final in 2019. They've been in the national championship game the last two tournaments in 2018, they fell to Florida State by a 1-0 scoreline, and then they fell to Stanford in 2019 out in San Jose after a 0-0 draw and losing 5-4 in penalties. So this team has a lot of confidence in themselves. They can get to the end. And they have the talent to do it too. Only one loss this year which came in the ACC championship against the one seed, Florida State Seminoles, who after last checking are currently tied 1-1 with Penn State. So now we have a, another corner kick here. Looks like Tar Heel players want to charge into the box from inside the 18 to inside the six on this corner kick, but they play it short. Meza, Grant, over to Rachel Jones. Space to make a move, goes out wide, and it's too far in front of the path of Sam Meza. Rachel Jones, excellent junior attacker from the state of Georgia out in Lawrenceville. 
First team all ACC in 2020 this year during the fall. She had six goals. She currently this season has six goals and five assists and scored uh, her the first brace of her career uh, in Wake against Wake Forest. And she's one of the big penalty kick takers for this Tar Heel side. Nearly 10 minutes in, no score. Washington has had two shots, though they've been wayward. And now here comes Carolina. Della Peruta trying to go over the top to Isabel Cox, and it'll be a throw to the Huskies. You said the Huskies finished third in the Pac-12 conference. The Pac-12 was the only conference, uh, only Power 5 conference that did not play any of their soccer in the fall. They put all their schedule in the spring and in their Pac-12, and they played a lot of Pac-12 games, went 5-3-3 three, and three in the conference, finishing third, getting that at-large bid. The other major conferences, the the ACC, the SEC, the Big 12, they all played in the fall. And the Big 10 also played in the spring. My, my apologies. Tolentino. Allen. So for the Tar Heels and how they've, you know, gone through this spring type of football, they have uh, actually played four, four games against Delaware, against Tennessee, Villanova, and Columbus State. Meza, Jones, Jones, good cross, and it just needed a touch. Isabel Cox, the closest to it. Pinto is also in the area, as well as Della Peruta. First dangerous attempt from the Tar Heels early in this game. During uh, their spring football, the North Carolina Tar Heels have been exemplary. They defeated uh, Delaware 5-0. They defeated Tennessee 7-0 with two hat tricks coming from Brianna Pinto and Ruby Grant, two of the starters on this Tar Heel side. And then they defeated Columbus State 6-0 in the lone home game for the spring. Here's a chance from about 30 yards out, and it's corralled by Claudia Dickey. First shot on target for the Huskies. Long ball, header between Cox and Peng is won by Washington. And it looks like Del Peruta got a touch there against Clark, throw in to Washington. Expect to see a lot of substitutions coming in to the game for, especially on the Tar Heels side. Anson Dorrance loves getting as many young women to play as possible. Tells, her, tells his team to, the outfield players, to play as hard as they can for as long as they can. And then when the time comes to say, I need a rest, and they usually come out in waves. Patterson, Moore. Moore under pressure. That ball was almost given away. And the flag was up as I believe one of the Washington players was in an offside position if she had touched the ball on the back pass. So that's the call. Pinto now trying to split the lines to Cox. And Tolentino is too aggressive with her run. It's a throw to Washington. Washington under new leadership under head coach Nicole Van Dyke, who as we said was in her first season as the head coach at UW. But uh, she has been in the coaching scene, especially on the West Coast, uh, for most of the 21st century. Uh, she began her career at Cal State San Stanislas uh, in 
in the CCAA. And then she coached her alma mater, Cal State Bakersfield, for five years. As there's an accurate shot, but a soft shot right into the midst of Claudia Dickey for another save. And then Van Dyke spent four seasons as an assistant coach and associate head coach at Stanford, winning the 2011 National Championship. And then before coming to Washington, she spent five seasons at Penn and leading the Quakers to win the Ivy League and get to the NCAA tournament. Flag is up off sides. I believe that time on Stickle. Hear a lot of support from the Huskies fans as well as Tar Heel players. Limited attendance here in Cary, North Carolina due to the NCAA guidelines. Only parents and select family members can come and watch their daughters and sisters perform. Here's Hussein trying to shake off Pinto. It's great that fans are here in Cary to watch the action. And maybe a few more fans can come when the final, when the College Cup is played at the main stadium here at Wake Med Soccer Park, Salem Stadium, in just about a little over a week's time, where a national championship will be crowned. This tournament, a bit, a big change the la in the format from previous tournaments, especially in the women's game. 64 teams were previously in the tournament. This year, only 48. The uh, Power Five conferences leading the way with 22 of the 48 bids, both automatic qualifiers and at large. And five were from the ACC, five SEC, five Pac-12, four Big Ten, three Big 12. And as we started the day at this, in the round of 16, all five ACC schools were in the round, of the third round, as Libby Moore is tackled by Simmons, Sienna Simmonsma for a free kick. Five ACC schools in the round of 16. Three were from the SEC. Two were from the Pac-12. Two were in the Big 12. And then you had uh, one team from the Big 10. One team from the Big East in Georgetown, uh, one team from the West Coast Conference, that, be, that being Santa Clara, and the Cinderella team of this tournament from Conference USA, the Rice Owls, who defeated both Furman and then this past weekend, the five seed West Virginia, one nil on a penalty kick goal that was their only shot of the game. All it takes is one to advance. And they have been the modic, they are the mantle of survive and advance in this tournament. And they have a big test in front of them as late tonight they will take on Virginia. Here's Ruby Grant, freshman from London, England, who enrolled in January of 2021 and is getting her first action as a Tar Heel this, this spring. Pinto. Allen. Tolentino looking to go out wide towards Jones. She decides to. Jones took a stumble but keeps possession. Tolentino to Meza. Pushed off the ball by Vanderjagt. And now finds Simmonsma, the number nine for Washington. Hussein. That's going to be a big battle. The two number eights, Hussein and Pinto. And Hussein comes out the victor. Though Clark cannot control that pass. As now Cox looking to shield off her defender, McDaniel. It's Isabel Cox into the box, trying to cut it to Jones. 
Pang got a step in. So did McDaniel on the recovery. But the danger's not over yet. As, but it will be as Ruby Grant lets the ball file out of play for a moment. And Della Peruta will take the throw. 20 minutes in. Goal is between North Carolina and Washington. So far, Washington has had four shots and two have been on target, though they've been very comfortable saves for Claudia Dickey. The most dangerous chance coming in the 12th minute when Rachel Jones sent in a sharp cross that was passed that just needed a touch from Isabel Cox and it would have been 1-0. But it is goalless as Libby Moore tries to find Rachel Jones. A little bit of a misplay, stays in this side. Tolentino's cross met by Grant, and Pang clears it out of harm's way as Jones was looking to fire a sharp shot on target. And whistle's gonna be blown as Pinto takes down Amira, Amira Hussain. Referee for today's game is Samantha Martinez. And a free kick to the Huskies. And it looks, Washington's not gonna make a change yet, but it looks like they're, go they're going to be the first one to make a change. Currently at the other field at Wake Med Soccer Park at field number two, it is Florida State one, Penn State one at halftime. Long set piece sent in, here's a chance. And a save from Claudia Dickey after the shot by, I believe that's by Simmonsma. Here in the 22nd minute. See Washington's really trying to congest the middle of the pitch. That's why you're not really seeing Brianna Pinto get that many touches. Carolina has been forced to advance the ball from a wider position. Here's Meza. Goes wide here to Rachel Jones. Up against Johnston. Now Cox against Pang. Kayleen Pang. Did really, really well defensively, but the clearance falls right to Rachel Jones just outside the box, and a slide challenge by Johnston. Concedes the throw, and now we got changes coming in, I believe for both Washington and North Carolina. Number 26, Elena Palacios comes in as well as number 16, Ali Gambone for the Tar Heels. Throw coming in from Paige Tolentino. Jones, Moore. Pinto, Pinto gets a touch in, trying to continue her dribble. Sees Cox, but Pang gets a foot in. Kayleen Pang, second team all Pac-12 defender, it's been a, Solid starter the last three years. Had her first career assist in the 3-0 win against Liberty. And she has taken on the duties of marking Carolina's star striker, Isabel Cox. As Simmonsma shakes off a defender. Sienna Simmonsma getting, trying to get Patterson off her feet. Spin move, Simmonsma. Comfortable save for Dickey. But you gotta credit what Sienna Simmonsma did going one on against two, and sometimes at, at the end of that move, three Carolina defenders. Sienna Simmons, the senior out of Newport Beach, California. Only has one goal on the season, but it was a big one, a game winner, game winning goal against Cal this spring. Here's Patterson, trying to find Gambone. Goes back to Moore and Carolina trying to reorganize here in the 25th minute. 
Again, Carolina without a shot in the opening 25 minutes. Meanwhile, Washington has six, and three of them have been on target. Allen, sharp ball through the center. Cox got a touch, now Pinto. Della Peruta, Gambone. Ali Gambone, cutting into the middle, linking with Pinto. Gets by two defenders, now gets it out wide. Here is Isabel Cox. Strong challenge by Kayla McDaniel, conceding the corner kick. Third corner kick for the Tar Heels. Isabel Cox is named to the All-ACC freshman team last year. And she had a great 2019 NCAA tournament. She scored her first career brace uh, against Michigan in the third round of the NCAA tournament. Five goals, six assists in 2019. This season, four goals, four assists as Tolentino delivers the corner kick from the far side. Cox is looking to get a touch. Gambone giving chase against Laura Roberts. Now Patterson. Avery Patterson trying to get a cross in, blocked by Pang, and forced back is Washington's Kaylee, St Kaylee Stickle. They're trying to link up, Simmons and Stickle. Though Summer Yates steps in, intercepts the ball. Yates, and it looks like Stickle ran out of energy on that run, and it'll fall all the way back to Claudia Dickey. In terms of postseason success, I mean, we've, we mentioned how imp how exemplary Carolina's has been, but Washington, this is the fifth time that the Washington Huskies have made the round of 16. Going back, last time it happened was in 2014 when they lost away to Stanford in the third round in a big Pac-12 battle. They have made it to the quarterfinals twice as they win a corner kick. Washington, Hus Washington Huskies reached the quarterfinals in 2004. And then also in 2010 was the last time the Huskies reached the quarterfinals in their 16 appearances. All-time record, 14 wins, three, 14 wins, two draws, 13 losses. Corner kick sent in, and it looked like Pang almost got ahead to it on that corner kick, and it'll be a throw to Carolina here in the 28th minute. We haven't mentioned much about Brianna Pinto, as she's been closely marked in the middle of the pitch, but Brianna Pinto uh, just announced yesterday that she was named to as a semifinalist to the Mac Herman Trophy Award, which is the highest award in college soccer, as Washington makes another change. Looks like it's gonna be number 25, Cameron Price. Freshman out of Reisterstown, Maryland. But Brianna Pinto joins a great list of players, including Amira Ali out of Rutgers, Emily Alvarado of TCU, Malia Berkeley of Florida State, Michaela Coolahan of BYU, Penelope Hawking of USC, Jalen Howell of Florida State, Jimena Lopez of Texas A&M, Sydney, Sydney Nozello of South Florida, Anna Potagil of Arkansas, Lucy Porter of Hofstra, the whistle is blown on Washington, Miko Rolfsema of Rice, who is, who is an excellent center back for the Owls, as I called their game in their win against West Virginia. You also have Yasmeen Ryan, 
of TCU, Ali Schlegel of Penn State, and Delaney Sheehan of UCLA. Those are the 15 semifinalists. That list will be whittled down to five finalists. And Brianna Pinto, who is a member of that semifinalist list, is also uh, playing her final games with the Tar Heels as she was selected third in the NWSL draft to Sky Blue FC, who was renamed Gotham, New York, New Jersey. That's a great long ball towards Isabel Cox. She couldn't control it. McDaniel clears it. But Brianna Pinto, as well as two other Tar Heels, Emily Fox and Taylor Otto, were drafted in the NWSL draft. Emily Fox was drafted number one overall to Racing Louisville. And Taylor Otto, the star central midfielder for this Tar Heel squad, was selected 11th. And they both decided to begin their professional careers and forego their eligibility. So Fox and Otto are teammates in Louisville, Kentucky. And you can see them play in Louisville as the NWSL will be back in action again this upcoming weekend. Here's a chance for the Huskies. Palacios had an opportunity, though. That opportunity went begging as we are in the 31st minute. Della Peruta shields off Roberts. And now the changes come in for North Carolina. And we mentioned it's a, it's a line change practically. Seeing players like number 22. Maggie Pierce, number 13, Allison Remington. as well as number 33, Riley Quinlan, and number 26, Holly Clanky. Carolina on the ball here with Alexis Allen. In terms of all the other players that have come in, you have Rachel Dorwart, number nine, Tori Hansen, Alexis Strickland, and Washington brought in a change, Allie Remington in for Summer Yates. So five changes for Anson Dorrance as Gambone is on the ball now on the left side. Good interception, though the pass is deflected and falls into the foot of Alexis Strickland who is looking on the run for Carolina's Hallie Clanky. And it will be a Tar Heel throw in here in the 33rd minute. In terms of this Washington Huskies side, they had four players earn all Pac-12 honors. They're most since 2004. Summer Yates, who you saw number 10 in attack, as well as Amira Hussein in the midfield, earned first team all Pac-12. And then we mentioned uh, Kayleen Pang was second team all Pac-12. as well as Olivia Vanderjacht, who was named to the third team all Pac-12. And now Washington's on the ball. Hussein. Heavily marked, passes it back to Johnston. Long cross into the box, was looking towards Cameron Price. Now it'll be swallowed up by Dickey. Amira Hussain, as we mentioned, first team all Pac-12, but she did something very impressive in their first round win against Liberty. 
scoring the fastest tournament goal in Washington history, scoring 67 seconds into the game against the Flames. And so far, their defense has been resolute. As we mentioned, five consecutive shutouts for this defense and goalkeeper Olivia Sakani. Here's Dorwart. Clanky. Clanky against Roberts. Cross in, and Sakani meets to it as Gambone was the target over at the far post. Just under 10 minutes remaining here in this first half. North Carolina nil. Washington nil here at Field 4 at Wake Med Soccer Park in Cary, North Carolina. We thank you for joining us here on NCAA.com. I'm Brian Ware here at Field 4. If you want to watch the other game that's taking place right now between Florida State and Penn State, Dean Linky, voice of the of North Carolina Football Club and the North Carolina Courage is on the call for that game. Here's Allen, Tolentino. Hansen. Patterson able to get a foot in and not create a turnover. Now Quinlan. Good progression here, but that final pass over towards Alexis Strickland as, Gim as Peng pushes that ball long and now uh, Hussein, who has been in, who is in a box-to-box -box midfield position, has now moved into an advanced midfield position. With some of the other players coming off the field, starters coming off the field for the Huskies. Good pressure there from Price, able to force a throw. Della Peruta back to Patterson. Long ball over the top. Looking towards Dorwart. Second ball won by Washington as the Huskies switch the field. Great move there. By Washington's number 30, Kaylee Stickle. Carly St and it's Washington that gets a corner kick out of it. Just that quick bit of movement. By uh, Carly Stickle up against Paige Tolentino, the Tar Heel freshman defender. So the, the Huskies now have their third corner kick here in the 38th minute. Looks like Hussein is going to deliver it. No. Actually. Get into a wider position, cross in by Johnston. Dickey trying to come out to claim it, can't win it. And the chance misses out as Allie Remington of Washington, the sophomore out of Canada, had that wayward shot. Remington, number 13, has been a reserve player the last two years. Scored her first goal in 2019 against Cal Poly. And in her club days in high school, she trained with the Vancouver Whitecaps Academy, Vancouver of the MLS. You can see the wind's really starting to pick up here. Wind coming from the west, right into the direction of where our camera is shooting. So that's why you're hearing some of that whoosh effects on our, on our mics. Here's Johnston, trying to put a sharp pass in, blocked by Gambone. And Carly Stickle will get a throw. And she was double teamed by both 
Tolentino and Gambone. And it looks like Stickle's gonna try to do a long throw into the box. Header by Allen. Second ball in is Wayward. Tar Heel side, as we said, has been very impressive defensively, only conceding six goals all year. And they've been playing this spring without one of their elite defenders, Macy Bell, the ACC freshman of the year in 2019 and one of the best defenders in the conference in the country. It has been out with injury this spring. And talking with Coach Anson Dorrance, it sounds that it, it's unlikely that she will return for the remainder of the season. So that's why you're seeing uh, both Alexis Al uh, Abby Allen, a freshman from Austin, Texas, getting minutes or being a starter in, in the back line, as well as Avery Patterson, freshman out of Jacksonville, Florida, who has started to play in this spring football. So Coach Dorn's having to shift some players around, shift responsibilities around as certain players are out injured. Several star players went professional. Gambone, look at the ball in, trying to find Strickland and Sakani able to corral it. game's been pretty even so far in this first half. Obviously, the statistics would tell a different story, but if you've looked at how the game has been played from side to side, Washington has held firm when they've had to. They haven't really given Carolina golden opportunities. They still have zero shots, and yet there have been times where the Washington moves their pressure up the field and they win balls in certain positions. They haven't put a lot of power in those shots. Claudia Dickey has had to make, has made very comfortable saves so far in this first half. But you can see that the shift of the field changes when Washington's on the ball offensively to when they allow Carolina to have possession. And that's why this game so far has been pretty even as the Huskies now have a set piece here late in the first half. Kayla McDaniel, the junior out of Rancho Cucamonga, California, deliver the set piece. Ball into the box. Huskies and Tar Heels right at the edge of the 18. Ball hangs up in the air. Falls, not claimed yet. And Allen able to win it. And Carolina gets rid of it. Here's Peng. Trying to go route one to Stickle. And solid defensive work by Abby Allen, the freshman out of Austin, Texas, who scored her first career goal against Delaware. She also scored in their 2-0 win against Denver. And she was a two-time All-American at Lake Travis High School out in Austin in the Texas capital. Moving into the final minute of play here in the first half at Wake Med Soccer Park. Price loses the ball to Hansen. 
Hussein, ball over the top. Stickle got ahead to it, but header was too sharp and she couldn't continue her run with a dribble. Johnson does well on the header. Recovered though by the Tar Heels, Gambone. Tolentino, Gambone again, just at the edge of the box. Pass in deflected, Hussein tracks back to get it. And that will be the first half here at Wake Med Soccer Park. Very competitive game between the Tar Heels and the Huskies. It is nil-nil as the Huskies have seven shots to Carolina's zero, a goose egg. Who would have thunk it? The number two Tar Heels in a battle against the Huskies. The battle of East Coast and West.